We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay, what is going on, ladies and gents? Welcome back to a brand new podcast. And this is going to be called The Student Podcast. Welcome. Obviously, you guys will probably recognise me from YouTube. My name is Thomas Rountree. I'm an architecture student studying at Birmingham City University. And I've just literally, out of the blue, decided to start up a podcast myself. So I'm a massive fan of podcasts. I think they're a perfect platform for people to learn, to feel, um, kind of feel welcome, a place where they can relate with stories. I'm going to just decide to do one myself. I feel like there's not many student podcasts out there. Um, and I thought that it would be good if I could host host um, my own podcast show or podcast slash show. And I thought it'd be pretty cool. So if you are currently listening to this on the audio, um, the audio versions will be live on Spotify, SoundCloud, and hopefully iTunes. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet, but I will figure it out at some point. Um, and the visual version is going to be up on my YouTube channel. So that is going to literally just going to be uh, Thomas Rountree. This is the second time I've tried to film this um, and the, the first one didn't really go to plan or well, it didn't come out how I kind of wanted it to come out. Um, so I thought I'd just redo it and hopefully this will be a little bit smoother, not as much stuttering because um, I do apologise. I do stutter quite a lot when I'm talking um, to a microphone as most people do. Um, so throughout this podcast, or throughout the whole uh, student podcast, I kind of want to cover um, my personal stories. Um, so cover some of my experiences. I want to uh, give you guys some advice, um, some tips and tricks, maybe talk through some motivation, talk through topics like routine, um, freshers week, which is this, this video is going to cover personally. Um, and yeah, I basically just want it to be a kind of like a home for um, students or just anyone um, to sit and enjoy a bit of content, sit and enjoy a podcast, whether you're driving around, whether you're a student um, and you are finding it hard to settle into university or you just want to find a little bit of entertainment. Um, I thought this podcast would be a good place for you guys to come, um, get a bit of entertainment, have a bit of content um, and a place where you guys can relate really um, so I want this to be, I want this podcast to be available to anyone, not just students, but just for um, people that want to be entertained on a on a regular basis. I'm not really sure how often I'm going to upload these, probably, or well, hopefully maybe once a week, um, but I'll see how popular this first one is um, and see what you guys' comments are um, and we can go from there. Um, so I'm going to try and make them fairly brief, they'll probably be about 30 to 40 minutes long. Um, so I don't kind of want to drag them out too long. I do want to try and get guests on the show as I found that that would be quite an interesting dynamic, get people's um, opinions uh, where we can do different topics. And also it means that you guys can have a break from my voice for once because I'm sure you guys are probably getting bored of me through my YouTube channel anyway. Um, so yes, uh, the visual will be available on YouTube. Um, that is at Thomas Rancher. That is a second plug already into the podcast <laughs> and today's video or podcast we're going to be covering freshers week um, a little story time which is going to be the drunkest I've ever been and we're also going to be talking about moving in day uh, the very daunting moving in day moving into university meeting your flatmates for the first time meeting your course mates for the first time um, and yeah let's dive right into it um, so obviously um, if you are a UK listener um you get your A-levels around uh, mid-August time um, and you tend to get yourself into a Facebook group chat once you know what university you're going to, uh, what accommodation you'll be in. Um, you generally get yourself into a Facebook group chat. You get to know some of your housemates, um, which I, I hope you guys have been in a Facebook group chat because I really do advise people to get to speak to the housemates before getting to university. Um, so personally for me, what happened was we got added into like an accommodation um, Facebook group. Um, so for me, I got an unconditional offer, so I knew what university I was going to. I knew my accommodation from quite an, quite an early um, time. I think I knew from about eight, April onwards. Um, so I kind of got into the group quite early. Uh, got to know some of my housemates quite early on through our Messenger, Facebook Messenger. Um, and it's just a perfect way to get yourself a little bit, a little bit more comfortable with the people you're living with. Um, you get to know them, you get to find out their interests, you get to find out where they're from and just kind of find out whether you're actually going to get on with these people or not um, as it can be quite daunting getting into university and not knowing anyone there. Um, you kind of do want to speak to people before you go to see who's going to be there 
um, and just kind of recognize if you're going to get on with them or not. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. I got myself in this fa Facebook group chat um, and we basically got told our flat and our obviously accommodation. And what we did was in the group chat, we added in our flat number, um, room, block, etc. And we basically had to fish through this list of people and try and find your housemates kind of along the list and then add them into a Facebook group chat. So I think um, you won't, you probably won't get everyone from your flat into the Facebook group group chat at the start, which is fine. Um, so I lived in a flat of five people or five, it's me plus five people. So it was a six person flat. Um, and I think I got to know four of them um, before actually getting to university. So it was really, really good to get to know them, obviously get to know their interests, whether you're gonna get on with them, etc. So obviously this, this brings me to the, the daunting moving in day. This is a very, very, I'm not gonna say daunting again, because I've just said it a few times. It's a very anxious, very exciting day, really. It is a very exciting day. Um, obviously leaving home, um, you might already have left home. If you're an international student, you might already be there. Um, obviously some people who are commuting, they may move in a little bit earlier. Um, but for me, I moved in on the Saturday, the week before Fresh Week, I believe. Um, I think most people move in um, the weekend kind of before freshers week so you get to you get to grips with the area you get to grips with your, your flatmates and then you go into freshers week and then you go into your first week at university um, so freshers week is kind of like your induction week on your course um, as it was for me anyway I'm not sure if that's the same for everyone else anyway so moving in day is a very daunting experience everyone's going with their parents um, you get there obviously there's a lot of people kind of helping you out helping you move in um, you get to meet um, people across the flat across you um, you bump into a lot of people on the way say hello whatever um, so on the day of we, us moving in I believe one of my housemates was already there um, his name was Josh absolutely love Josh if you guys watch my YouTube videos at the end of every single video I have a clip of someone saying subscribe to Thomas Rountree legend that is actually Josh um, so I lived with Josh first year um, in my flat and I specifically remember the day that we moved into my flat. I walked into the kitchen. I think I bumped into a few people along the way, um, said hello or whatever. Walked into the kitchen, looked on the table, and I saw this little packet of sweets which had been opened, but had a little, a little nice label on it. I read the label, and it said, um, Josh Ann's sweets, help yourself. And I'm not going to lie, this was the perfect way to move into your house, to walk into the kitchen and see... That was that there was some sweets sat there for you to have a go at. Um, obviously, my mum was like, "Oh, that's that's really nice of him." Um, so, if you guys want to get want to get friendly with uh, your housemates from the off and, and their parents, one hundred percent leave them a pack of sweets with a label on it saying "Help yourself" because that was literally the perfect way to get to know Josh um, and kind of get comfortable in your flat, knowing that someone is actually really nice and really caring and leaving you some sweets. Because honestly, if it was me. I love my sweets, I love my chocolate. If I'm buying some sweets and buying some chocolate, it tends to be eaten <laughs> before I actually get to university or it just stays in my room and I just nibble on it myself. But obviously Josh is a nice guy. He left some sweets for us um, and it was absolutely perfect way to get to know them. So if you are moving into university this weekend or next weekend, I'm not sure when you guys will be moving in, 100% leave some sweets or something just to make people feel more welcome. Um, and obviously it's like it's a good it's a good like starting point to speak to people anyway um had had some sweets felt felt a lot more comfortable moved out everything into my house um, or into my room um so obviously your duvets your pictures um your clothes you move pretty much everything in um, which is quite a long process obviously going up and down the stairs if you are um in a flat quite high up going back to the car taking things in it's quite a sweaty process it's quite it's quite a bit hectic um but you guys will obviously you'll experience that but it's all part of the journey moving everything into the university um it's all part of the fun and all part of the journey not sure if you can hear that but it's my little doggy barking away um anyway um so we moved in on the saturday obviously we spoke to spoke to josh lovely guy um and one thing that I do want to advise you guys to do from the off is definitely um, kind of leave your door open. So when I moved in into the flat, 
Josh was in there already um, with his family and he already had his door already had his door open so as we kind of walked in um, we could say hello met his family and everything obviously it's that awkward moment where you kind of meet your housemate for the first time and then you meet the parents and it's like hi my name my name's Tom nice to meet you and it's like oh this is this is my mom this is my dad and obviously you do it quite a lot throughout that day um, depending on how many people you're living with because obviously some flats are like 10 12 people which is I th- I'd find that pretty hectic um, um, but luckily for me my mum was only six people which was sound and I think that throughout the whole um, kind of accommodation I think six was the most maybe eight was a little bit more um, was probably the most um, but yeah um, moving in obviously meeting all the parents bit of an awkward experience but obviously you get used to it uh, after after meeting the first parents you kind of you kind of get used to it and you know what you're going to say basically exactly the same thing hi where are you from my name's tom blah 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 um and yes yeah, so i met i think out of the six or out of the five housemates i met three of them on the first day um so i spent some time with them throughout that day and uh, most of the time when you move into university you tend to kind of go into the flat assess the situation and then you'll probably wander out of your parents if you've gone up with your parents and you probably go shopping. You'd probably go for a big food shop. You may go out for a drink or you might go out for a meal just to kind of get settled um, and feel a little bit more comfortable. So most of the time you will probably spend the first day at university kind of just with your, with your family, um, just trying to settle in really. Um, and a lot of people will feel um, quite scared, quite anxious. So a lot of people will be quite quiet. Um, so I remember getting there, there was a couple, so there was a couple of them uh, that wanted to spend time in their room. So what I advise you guys to do is when you get to university, um, kind of go in, knock on people's doors, say hello to everyone, uh, make people feel welcome. There was this one guy that um, we met um, when I first moved in and he was the guy kind of like I spoke to the most on Facebook Messenger and I kind of thought that he would be like probably one of my best mates. Um, because I spoke to him quite a lot, got to know him quite well. I think I understood that he enjoyed football, etc. And when we first got there, um, I didn't actually, I didn't actually see him. So I went and knocked on everyone's doors just to say hello, make sure everyone's in there or not. Um, because obviously that's one thing that you do want to do. A lot of people will be quite shy, and if you are that person to go and say hello to them, you'll bring kind of bring them out a little bit more, um, and they feel a lot more comfortable with saying hello to people. Um, because a lot of people will just want to stay in their rooms quite quite to themselves which is obviously understandable because it is a very scary experience very daunting experience meeting all these strangers and living with these strangers for the first time probably the first time that people are going to move out their houses um, until they're 18 so this is probably the first time in 18 years that they're going to be living somewhere where they don't really understand or they're not like familiar with Um, so I remember getting there um, meeting this guy, I'm not going to drop any names in it, knocking on his door, shook his hand, said hello to him, everything. And literally, I remember the first thing I said to him was that, oh, I'm going to be watching Match of the Day tonight. Um, so if you want to come join me, because obviously, I think I did speak to him about football. I was like, oh, if you want to come join join me um, later on, you're very welcome. I'll probably be sat in the lounge, etc. Um, just to kind of make him feel a little bit more comfortable. Because I did understand that he was quite, he was quite quiet, um, and he seemed quite um, to himself, which is very understandable. Um, so just doing, some, just saying hello to someone, knocking on the door, um, asking them to maybe come, come for a drink or watch a film with them, come into the kitchen, and will make them feel a lot more welcome, make make them feel a lot more comfortable um, in their surroundings. And that is something that I probably advise you guys to do if there is someone in their flat and uh, that they're very quite quiet maybe ask them to go for a drink maybe ask them to watch a film with you maybe go for a food shop maybe just go for a wander get familiar with the city or wherever you are Um, and it make them feel a lot more comfortable around you um and yeah quick sip of the water so this leads me to the five well five things i feel like are very very important to take to university some of them being very very self-explanatory but some of them being um some essentials that i tend i tend to run out a lot of or i forget to buy on a on a a frequent basis so the first thing is going to be very simply pans so for me what i did on my first day at university i moved in i think i went to asda and i got like a seven pound um kind of like put together pan so it came in a little box um, it came with a handle, a pan, obviously, and then literally just two screws, and it just 
basically just says in the instructions just screw screw the handle to the pan obviously it sounds very self-explanatory it was seven pounds um and obviously i was i was very happy to get probably the cheapest pan um, that i could probably get and me being someone that cooks a lot this is probably the biggest mistake i could have made getting the cheapest pan because the amount of times that that pan fell apart whilst i was washing up the amount of times i lost the screws to it the amount of times i had to hold the pan physically with a, like a tea towel or something because the pan was broken so my one piece of advice is especially if you are cooking a lot um, get yourself a decent pan man 100% get yourself a decent pan even if it's just like a 20 pound frying pan or pans pots and pans 100% invest in a decent pan because it'll save you a lot of time a lot of stress a lot of effort um, and yeah it's pretty pretty simple one but I just threw that one in there the next one being toilet roll so you may think that you got toilet roll already there, um, but most likely you probably won't. And obviously living at home with your parents, your probably parents will go out and buy the toilet roll. Um, and you probably don't realize actually how fast you run out of toilet roll. Um, so 100% get yourself plenty of toilet roll. Make sure you keep topping yourself up. Point number three is probably the most important one. And that's going to be washing up liquids. So obviously at university, cooking a lot there's going to be a lot of you in the flat and if you are going to be sharing obviously the kitchen washing up liquid is absolutely vital so we ran out of washing it washing up liquid on a daily basis with the amount of washing up we were doing um so you could even get really really cheap washing up liquid from like audi or lidl um or you can invest in like your two pound washing up liquid from tesco or asda um, which might make your pans i don't know the extra 10 percent <laughs> cleaner um, so get yourself plenty of washing up liquid obviously being in a flat of six people we tended to share the washing up liquid so it ran out fairly quickly and obviously if you're in a flat of 10 12 people 100 get yourself plenty of washing up liquid i'm sure you could probably get like a multi-pack from um asda or little or whatever um and number four this is a smelly one <laughs> so you, you want to get yourself some air freshener so in my flat the amount of times that the kitchen absolutely stank like ridiculously bad um from food piling up um so a lot a lot of the time you'll notice that people will be quite lazy um in taking the bins out it's a job that no one wants to do taking the bins out is just a not ideal job if, if someone asks you to take the bin out you're just thinking no i'll, I'll leave it a little bit I'll, I'll i'll make it pile up a little bit and someone else will go take it out At the end of the day in our house or in our flat we had three bins most of the time the three bins would be full and then because no one could be bothered to take the bins out because they stank so bad and it was a bit of a trek well it wasn't even a trek it was three flights of stairs down um and through one door um, because no one could be bothered to do that we literally just had bin bags sat out in the kitchen with food full to the top and i can't explain how badly the kitchen smelt on a regular basis so my piece of advice is get yourself some air freshener for sure um cooking food when the kitchen smells is just not ideal at all eating your dinner when the kitchen smells is not ideal either um so get yourself some air freshener make your kitchen smell nice take the bins out man take the bins out on a frequent basis make sure that there's not food piling up because at the end of the day it's disgusting everyone's got to live in the same kitchen um some people might be more might cleaner some people might be a little bit more messy but at the end of the day if you if, 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 you've, got, if you've got five minutes just to take some bins down to the bin um just do it because it will save your kitchen from absolutely stinking like mine um, and obviously having an air freshener for your bedroom as well at university you'll know it should probably smell quite a lot i'm not sure why specifically at university you'd smell but um being in your own room you probably you probably won't notice how badly your room smells so if you can have an air freshener just to freshen up a little bit coming back from a, a hard day coming back from a hard day's work um at university and coming back to a lovely smelling bedroom it's fantastic so definitely get yourself an air freshener for both the kitchen um and your bedroom and finally bin bags my fifth and final point is going to be bin bags so 100 percent. i keep saying 100 percent definitely get yourself some bin bags get plenty of them make sure you get the right size bin bags because this is a mistake that a lot of people make and that what we made 
um because you could get a bin bag that's way too small for your bin and then obviously when you're putting stuff into the bin it'll end up just actually going into the like the plastic bin and not actually into the bin bag which is not ideal so get yourself plenty of bin bags um and they are my five go-to things that you guys will need the next one um or my next point is going to be get yourself some door stops um so this is vital um in your first week or your first few days at university just to get to know your flatmates um get yourself a door stop make sure your door is open at all times or not even all times but whenever you want to speak to people or you've heard someone come through the front door open your door make them feel welcome make people or invite people into your room say hello as they're walking past and when this way this is a fantastic way to get to know your flatmates from the off and if you get to know your flatmates from the beginning I promise you you'll become a lot better mates with them down the line um, if you get to know them quite well from the start, if you're quite welcoming to them. Um, obviously, if you are someone that's quite quiet, if you are listening to this and you're quite quiet, um, just just go and knock on people's doors. Just leave your door open. Let people just have a look in, just say hello. Obviously, some people will be quite... Um, they probably won't want people like looking into their room if you if you're hiding something. I'm not sure if you'd be hiding anything. Um, but yeah, just keep your door open. Get yourself a door stop. Just make people feel welcome. Kind of make it a little bit of like a, a communal space rather than just like a flat with bedrooms. Kind of make it a little bit of a community. Get to know all your flatmates. Um, obviously, some people might be. You might not get on with some people. You might get really on. You might get on really well with people. So I can put words out then. Um, but yeah, door stop, good one. So meeting your housemates for the first time is obviously very daunting. Um, some you might like, some you might not like. Um, but knocking on people's doors is is a good one uh, to get to know people, like my experiences. Um, and then something I want to do, get into. And then my first, well, so luckily for me, I actually had my best mate move into Birmingham City University with me. Um, so my best mate Cam, he got a unconditional offer at Birmingham City University as well. Um, unluckily, he actually moved into an, a different accommodation, so he was on a, in the accommodation pretty much opposite me. Um, but it was very, very good for me and him to obviously have um, each other there on the first few days. Um, so obviously being quite awkward, meeting your flatmates for the first time. Um, a lot of you guys are probably in this situation at the moment, um, and you probably want one of your mates there with you. Um, but I had Cam there, it was really, really good to have him. Um, so luckily, um, Cam got to know a lot of my housemates, so he came around quite often, um, and we all sat together, we got on really well. Uh, but my first evening, so on that Saturday night, um, after moving in, um, and kind of putting my, all my stuff away, making myself feel more comfortable, speaking to my housemates a little bit, me and Cam were the only two to go out. Well, we didn't actually go out, we went to the, we went to the pub. So usually, that at universities you will have student pubs and luckily for us um our student pub was literally directly opposite my accommodation so i could literally see the pub out of my window um which was obviously very handy if everyone's if everyone likes likes a drink then a pub literally opposite your bedroom is fantastic so me and cam went to the student pub opposite my accommodation and we thought we'll just go to the pub have a couple of drinks, maybe meet some people in there um, and just kind of get a little bit more sociable, get to know some people um, and potentially just make some friends. So what we did, we went to the pub probably around like eight, nine o'clock in the evening. We went upstairs and obviously at this point, international students are quite friendly with each other. Uh, they've been there for probably about a month before this. Um, so if you are moving into university now, you probably notice that a lot of international students have been there probably like a month before. And we went in to this pub, got ourselves a pint, walked upstairs thinking, right, let's let's go and meet some people. It sounds it sounds quite rowdy upstairs. We're thinking, yeah, there's, there's something going on. There's a party or something. So we thought, yeah, we'll go, we'll go join them. We'll go upstairs, not realising that it's an international student event. So we're thinking, right, so we're now... We're now in a room where there's an international student event going on. Obviously, not a lot, not a lot of them could speak English. So we thought, oh, we'll just we'll take a seat anyway, see if we can speak to any of them. So what me and Cam ended up doing on the first Saturday of being at university was sitting in this pub, in the up in in the upstairs in the corner with a pint, 
literally just sat there watching this massive international student event and we're literally just sat there contemplating life not sure what we were doing where we were and just thinking like what on earth are we doing spending our first evening at university just sat there us two with a pint with a bunch of international students that can't speak English yeah that was an interesting first evening um, and this leads me to our first night out so on the Sunday the following day was actually our first night out and this was an interesting one so as you guys will know um, Freshers Week is like the pretty much the perfect time and opportunity to get to know your housemates, get to know um, the flats around you. So you can either you could probably have like a pre-drinks, invite everyone around, um, and obviously having a drink is a fantastic way to get to know people. It let your hair down a little bit, makes you feel more relaxed. You might get a little bit more rowdy after having a couple of drinks. Um, and you get to know people a little bit better. What kind of music they like, um, whether they're an absolute liability on a night out. Um, kind of whether they're a lightweight, whether they're a heavyweight. Um, and yeah, so our first night out was the on the Sunday evening. Um, so I believe me um, and two of our, well, three of our housemates, including Josh, went out. And we also obviously invited Cam along. And I specifically remember one of my flatmates. I'm not going to mention names because I know she might get a little bit upset with me telling everyone this. Um, but basically what happened was we were leaving the accommodation. We'd already booked an Uber and we were heading over to kind of where the Uber was. It was like a five minute walk from our accommodation because you couldn't actually pull up a car right outside our accommodation. Anyway, we're walking along to the Uber and this girl, um, she's got a purse with her, with her ID and everything, all her cards and everything. And as we're walking out the accommodation, we're obviously in a rush to get into this Uber. She goes, oh, I don't really want to carry my purse into into um prism that's where we're heading um and she goes oh i'll just put it under this traffic cone so there's a traffic cone right outside the accommodation we didn't have time to go back in to put the purse um so she's like i'll just leave it here and we're all like yeah sam we can just grab it on the way back it'll be fine so what she does she puts a purse underneath um this traffic cone and we're like right sam let's go we've got to get the uber quick ran to the uber um, at this point, the Uber had already been waiting like five minutes for us or anyway. anyway get into the Uber, get about halfway there into town. Um, probably like probably like a good five, ten minutes into the drive. And the girl goes, oh no, I've left my ID in that purse I left under the under the um, traffic cone. And we're thinking, oh my gosh. It's one of them evenings where it's the first night out. You're starting to realise who's going to be a liability after they've had a drink and who's not. And this girl was definitely going to become a reliability. If you listen to this, um, obviously you know who you are. We love you. Um, but yeah, what what ends up happening here? So we stop the Uber. We're like, all right, here we go. So she runs back to the traffic cone. Bearing in mind we're like a good 15 minute walk away from where our accommodation was. She runs back, gets a, um, an ID out of the purse. Runs back to the Uber, bearing in mind at this at this point we've been sat in the Uber probably for about half an hour. It's going to be an expensive Uber um, because we've been in it for so long. But luckily one of the girls is paying for it. Um, so a lot of the time at university you'll kind of, you'll decide on who's going to pay for an Uber there, who's going to pay for an Uber back, maybe if you're splitting it. Because I'm pretty sure Uber does like split fares now. Um, and that's like a good way of paying for an Uber or paying for a taxi um, at university. Or you could walk it, save a little bit of money. Um, so she comes running back she's got her ID it's been like half an hour in this Uber so we're like right son let's finally get to the club so we get to Prism we all pay to go in I think it's like £10 because it's fresh sweet it's quite expensive but the cheap, the drinks were in there were fairly cheap we have a couple of drinks we have, we have a dance etc get to know everyone five minutes later this girl goes missing we're thinking bloody hell where has she gone now we've already lost her ID and now we've lost her in prison. And then we, we give her a ring. She's like, oh yeah, I'm just outside. Come come meet me. So all of us, we were out. All right, Sam, we'll come see you. We wander outside, not actually knowing that we're about to walk out of the front of the club. So literally just about to walk out the front of the club. Um, we walk out. We're like, where is she? She's not here. And we j- literally just walked out the front of the club. And she decided that she was going to pay for the Uber home. So we were like, oh, Sam, yeah, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go see her. And if we can get an Uber home, she's paying for it. It's sound. We get out, I ring her again. Like, where are you? Where are you? She's like, oh, I've just got a taxi heading home. And we're all thinking, oh, my gosh. So we've just taken or just spent like half an hour plus 
to get to the club. We're then paid to get into the club. We're paid to have a few drinks. We've wandered out the front of the club by accident. We've left the club and we've rang her saying, where is she? And she's already headed home. So we haven't got an Uber home. So we're all obviously there like, oh my God, this girl is going to be an absolute liability. Obviously, once again, perfect way to get to know people. Um, perfect way to know if you're going to actually get on with these people or not. Um, but yeah, that was my first night out. Very interesting one. She is a massive liability, but we all love her. I'm actually seeing her for the first time in a few months next week, which would be interesting. And yeah, that was my first night out in Birmingham. Not a huge fan of Prism myself. I'm not sure about you guys, but Prism is just mm, not my kind of scene. I'm personally more of like a techno kind of guy. So I like, um, if you're from Birmingham, I like Lab 11. I like kind of like the tech the tech clubs in Digbuff. Not that I'd go out much, but if I was to go out, um, I'd probably go to like a techno event or something like that. I'm not a huge fan of like Prism and players and all them kind of bars. Yes, the drinks are cheap, which is fantastic, but it's not my kind of scene. Just having some water for you audio people. That's like some, <laughs> that's like some ASMR stuff. Hello. <laughs> Right, we're now going to move into a story time. So this is going to be a segment that I want to do every week where I basically just give my story, like give a story, give an interesting story, give a filthy story. And this one is going to be my most drunk experience. So this was a, this was a hilarious experience. Um, so I don't actually think that this was actually Freshers Week. Um, this was a, a few weeks in or maybe even a few months in. And basically... I believe it was Josh's birthday and it was the first opportunity for us to have like a decent house party. We're like, yes, we can we can have a proper party. Um, but obviously I had balloons everywhere anyway for Josh's birthday. We'd had cake that day and everything. We're all amped up to go and obviously make, make the biggest party possible. Because obviously when you're at university, you want to be that flat that's having the sick party. You want to be that flat that's got the best speakers. You want to be that flat that's got the most people at a party so what we do we go out we buy a speaker um so we all split the speaker i think it was like i think we got a really good deal i think it was like i want to say 80 pound for these fats and when i say fat these were fat speakers um so i think it was about 80 pound for these speakers and because there were quite a few of us we all split it between us so i think there was i think there was like four of us so i think we paid 20 pound each was a fantastic deal for these massive speakers anyway I invite some of my mates from my architecture course. Cam invites some of his mates from his course. We invite other flats round. This is a big, big opportunity to have a massive party. Show everyone all how much of a party animal we all are. So I think it's a fantastic idea. I was like, oh, let's let's go get some drinks. So we went to B&M. If you're a student, B&M is a fantastic place to get some cheap drinks. Same as like Audi and Lidl. Uh, so we go to B&M. I decided it was a good idea to buy myself a litre bottle of vodka. So a litre bottle of Smirnoff vodka and I turn to Cam and I go should I try and get through this tonight and obviously it was like we're all like yeah let's let's do it yeah we've got everyone around might as well get as drunk as possible obviously thinking you're 18 years old this is your first opportunity some of the girls are coming around you're thinking yeah let's try and drink as much as possible be some sick guys obviously just was not sick I was 18 years old I was probably I was physically sick but I wasn't actually a sick guy at the time Anyway, so we get this we get this bottle of bottle of vodka for myself. Um, we obviously head back to the flat. We set up the flat. It's a sick sick little event. Um, gets about I don't know just just past pre drinks. I've had about a third of this liter bottle of vodka, and I'm thinking, Jesus, I'm I'm gonna be absolutely steaming tonight. Um, so. Obviously, me being a drunken mess, probably about an hour into the party already, I'm literally already that guy, absolutely smashed when people are turning up. At this point onwards, I forget everything, absolutely everything. And the next day, I get told all of the stories. So some of the stories I get told, obviously, one of them being, you finished that litre bottle of vodka. I'm not sure how I didn't go to hospital. I don't know how I'm still alive, obviously. I think my tolerance is decent with alcohol, so that kind of helped me a little bit. Um, but let's just say I wasn't able to do physically anything apart from throw up. I couldn't speak, I couldn't walk, I didn't know where I was. Obviously, I don't remember any of this. This is just what I got told. 
Um, and what I got told was that I was outside the front with a group of people. Apparently, I threw up everywhere. So that, that's the, that was the first sick event, so well, sickness. How do you say that? That was the first time I threw up that night, sorry. Um, outside. And obviously, after I threw up, I was like, right, we need to get him inside. Um, so everyone like kind of like dragged me in. So as I come into the accommodation, throw up all along the corridor. Um, and if you are at Birmingham City University now and you are living in university locks, um, if there's a stain on the floor, I'm afraid that was me. <laughs> uh, so if anyone's listening to this, I do apologise. That was probably me throwing up on that on that evening. So I'm like, right, I need to go upstairs. Obviously, my some like Wolf of Wall Street experience here, like crawling along. Um, didn't know where I was, what was going on. I throw up all along the stairs as I'm trying to get up the stairs. Obviously, people are dragging me up. I can't go in the lift because throwing up in the lift, obviously cameras there and everything. No, can't be doing that. So I walk upstairs. Well, I don't walk upstairs. I drag. Someone drags me along up the stairs into my room. Cameron and Andreas were like looking after me. So shout out to them for getting me through this night because I'll probably still be in that like canal or something if they weren't with me. So I get myself into my bed. Well, they get me into bed. I throw up all in my bed. So they were sick everywhere in my bed. Cam had to obviously clean it all up. Thank God for Cam cleaning everything up. Um, and obviously I wake up the next day and I get told all of this and you know just one of them experiences where you wake up in the morning you know you've absolutely fucked up and everyone tells you what happens they tell you the girls you messaged <laughs> they tell you they tell you the the girls you tried to graft <laughs> it was just one of them nights where I don't remember a thing luckily we didn't go out so luckily it was just just at the accommodation so I couldn't have got lost or anything but boy, do not drink a litre bottle of vodka and think it's a good idea. Because it's 100% not. And that was my story time. Story? And that was my story time of this podcast. And now we're going to move into the Q&A part of the podcast or video if you're watching visual. Um, and basically this is going to be a section of every podcast where you guys are obviously going to ask me questions. I'm just going to answer them probably roughly about three a podcast because they might go might go into quite some detail so the first question i've got here is tips for taking notes so um, a couple of tips i would give is definitely learn to listen and write at the same time so this is something that i personally struggled with a lot in first year um, obviously you get given a lot of information in a lecture and trying to take that in and write it down at the same time is very difficult so definitely be selective with the notes you make so I, I would tend to write down the titles um, and like a, a rough description of the titles as we went along and that way I know kind of what each subject we, we had spoke about and it means that I could then go back and research that specific topic or I could go back to the lecture notes later on because a lot of the time they'll upload them on Moodle or something um, and then you can kind of revise the notes um, and revise the points that they make. So definitely be selective with the notes you make. Next question is gonna be, how much money do you spend on food? So first year I spent way too much. I was probably spending 15 pound plus a day. And this is something that I've spoke about a lot in my videos. And this is because I shopped in Tesco. So there was a Tesco like on the campus or on the Aston campus right next to our university. And this was spenny, this is proper spenny. This was not a good shop to shop in. Um, purely because it was a campus shop and obviously you can imagine they probably bump up the prices a little bit and I literally just went if I if I was hungry for my lunch I'd go and buy some food and with me being like a bodybuilder being into my fitness I do eat a lot of food um, so I did spend probably more than 15 pounds a day um, in Tesco which is not a good idea so my piece of advice is find yourself an Audi or Lidl yes the food my, food quality won't be as good but it is literally half the price and it'll save you so much money. And going into second year, I definitely consider budgeting. <laughs> this is something I did and it saved me a lot of money. And giving yourself weekly limits, um, which helps a lot because knowing that you've got a max amount of money to spend on that week definitely prevents you from spending more money um, and you can get into all sorts of debt and get into your, get into your overdrive quite easily. Um, overdrive, sorry, overdraft quite easily and quite quickly early on in the year. So definitely get yourself to Audi or Lidl. Don't shop at Tesco. Don't shop and spend £15 a day plus because that accumulates to like 
hundred pound a week on food, which is not ideal. Plus all the going out, plus all the drinking. Definitely go to Aldi and Lidl. And the final question is, how do you finish work on time? And I'm just going to give a simple answer here. It's just keep on top of your shit. Just keep on top of your work, um, and you will you will finish your work on time. Don't leave you don't leave your work to the last minute. Don't procrastinate. Literally. One thing that I did do was that as soon as I got given a piece of work and I knew it was only going to take me an hour or two, do it there and then. Get out of the way so you don't have to worry about it um, rather than leaving it to like the day before. Like right now, I've got loads of work to do before going back to uni and I haven't done any of it yet because I'm just procrastinating. I can't be bothered to do it. Um, so definitely just keep on top of your shit. And yeah, that is episode one of the student podcast complete. My voice hurts. I've been speaking unbelievably quick, probably a little bit too quick. Um, so if you enjoyed this podcast, please let me know in the comment section. If you're listening to this on um, audio, just drop me a mess- message on Instagram. Let me know um, some questions you want me to ask, answer in future podcasts. So like I mentioned, I want to get guests on the show. Um, the aim is to cover different topics each um, podcast, but I thought Freshers Week and kind of moving in day would be fitting um, for the first podcast as I do believe people will be moving in around this time um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed the first podcast uh, make sure you like the video make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell drop a comment for um, future questions and yeah peace out thank you